Well, hello everyone. Um, I'd like to shoot this video just to give a brief introduction to the book of John. Uh, it's a great book. It's a book that I encourage all new believers or just uh, uh, people unfamiliar with the Christian faith to start reading. Um, it happens to be my favorite gospel, and so I thought I would shoot this video just to give you a brief introduction to this whole entire book. Um, I've included a handout attached to this file online so that you can print out just a couple pages worth of handouts that will lead you through the Gospel of John if you so choose or you can just listen to this short introduction and then enjoy your reading. Okay, uh, the book of John uh, and part of this I'll, I'll just read some of the stuff that I already wrote in your handout. The synoptics uh, focus on Jesus' public ministry in Galilee. The synoptics is a word for the first three books. Matthew, Mark, and Luke we call synoptics because they see Jesus in his ministry very much the same. Uh, whereas John focuses on Jesus' private ministry in Judea. So many of the other Gospels are focusing on Jesus' public ministry in Galilee and we see that John is focused on his private ministry in a different region called Judea. The author John, uh, he's an apostle. He's, an, is an, he's one of the 12 apostles that Jesus uh, names and appoints. But we see that he never mentions his own name in this book. He refers to himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved. And I, and I think that's a great phrase and title. And I wrote down a possible answer in Luke chapter 7, so you can investigate that further if you'd like. The purpose of John's gospel is in John chapter 20, verses 30 through 31. So at the end of the book, he shows us what his purpose was for writing the whole entire book. And he says that you might believe, and that believing in him you might have life. This belief is uh, a faith in action and John has lots of action steps for different people and different characters that he brings up and so that's kind of interesting to note that you might believe and believe you might have life this life is not biological life this life is eternal life everlasting life and to do this um, he says there are many signs and miracles that Jesus Christ did not all of them are recorded in this book. Actually, only seven are recorded and then the resurrection. So eight. So seven signs are recorded and John thought that's enough to prove to you that Jesus Christ is who he says he is. And that if you believe in him, you will have everlasting life. So when going through this book, um, words to pay attention to, possible words to highlight would be life, belief, sign, witness. There are lots of witnesses in this book. And I gave to you the date and the location in which it was written. The next page on the handout is an outline of the book of John. And you can see that there's a big portion of this that's in the private sector. So private life of Jesus. And then before that, it talks about the public life of Jesus. So we see that the we call it the book of signs. That's where those seven signs are coming, those seven miracles. And that's given to the public. That's given for everybody to see, everybody to hear. But then the rest of the book, starting in chapter 13, is all the private life stuff of Jesus. Jesus and the Last Supper, Jesus with his disciples, and then the crucifixion, the resurrection, and then a one-chapter conclusion for this all. So, you can look over that outline. Hopefully that will help you as you're reading through the book of John. Another thing that's helpful for the book of John is... Uh, we say that Jesus had three years of public ministry. How do we know that he had three years of public ministry? Well, there's a reoccurring festival, feast. It's called the Feast of Passover. started off in the book of Exodus to remind the people that um, when in the book of Exodus, when the plague ha was going to come, that they were to put the blood of a lamb on their doorposts and the death angel would pass over those houses that had that, the Israelite houses. And that became known as the Passover celebration. So each year, even today, between March and April, the Passover is celebrated in Israel and by Jewish people today. This is its origins. Well, the Gospels let us know that these festivals are still happening. And each time that festival reoccurs, another year has passed. 
And so in the book of John, we definitely see those four Passovers. And so the next page, I have listed out those four Passovers for you. And we've given those different Passovers names. Okay, so at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, we have Passover number one. Uh, this is found in John chapter 2. We call it the Lord of the Temple. He uh, goes to the temple and sees that people are selling or cheating one another with their exchanging of money and exchanging of animals. And he goes over and overturns those money changing tables and says, My father's house shall be a house of prayer. Okay, 12 months later, in chapter 5 of John, we have another Passover celebration. And here we say he's the Lord of the Sabbath, because on the Sabbath, on the Passover, he heals a man who was lame for 38 years. And instead of rejoicing, the religious leaders are challenging him and accusing him of breaking the law because he's technically working on the Sabbath. Okay, 12 months later, in the very next chapter, another year has passed already. Uh, Passover number three, he does not attend. He doesn't go to Jerusalem like he normally does. Instead, he stays back. Uh, I think in, in I think this is in Galilee. He stays back and he feeds the 5,000 people that were gathered there. Then in chapter 18, yet another year has passed, and this is the final Passover. He is Lord of life, and this is where he lays down his life as the perfect Passover lamb for the whole entire world. So this helps us see how much time is passing as these different chapters in the book of John are, are reoccurring. And sometimes they're passing quite quickly, and we don't even, we're not even aware of this. As in chapters 5 and 6, there's 12 months period of time that passes, yet John only decides to record just a few things that happen within that 12-month period of time. So the next page is a page of introductions. As most letters, there is a small introduction portion um, to many of these ancient letters. In this, the book of John, it introduces us to whom Jesus is, and he is described as the Word. And we see that Jesus' origins are, he has no beginning. Jesus is eternal from the very start. He was with God in the beginning, in the beginning was God, in the beginning uh, was in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus Christ is God and was with uh, the Father and the Holy Spirit at the very beginning of all of this, the very beginning of creation and before. So we see that he's not a new created being starting off in the book of John. He is uh, always existing, but having a flesh put on this being of Jesus Christ. Then we're introduced to the John, John the Baptist, who is actually the cousin of Jesus Christ. And we see how he is described and we see what he is doing um, as a ministry work in Israel. And then we're introduced to the first disciples. Some of the first disciples leave John the Baptist to go follow Jesus. And I gave you a, uh, a section here to write out, the, write out their names, those first followers, and... Um, the, uh, the sibling relationship of some of them as the first followers. Okay, this next section, there's a big number seven, the seven signs of the book of John. So John is unique. The other Gospels record a lot of miracles. John records seven signs, and signs is, is a unique term to him because it, it's like the, uh, the stop sign. The stop sign itself doesn't... Um, the reason we stop is not because of the sign, but because of what the sign represents. It's law and order. If we don't stop there, uh, the police are rightful in, in pulling us over because that sign means and represents something. So these signs that Jesus does uh, mean and represent something else. So we have, um, we have Jesus turning water into wine. We have him feeding the 5,000 we have him raising Lazarus. And this shows us his power over something. And so I'd like for you to think about that. The answers to these types of things are always provided at the, at the bottom of the handout if you want some help. So that's the seven signs in the book of John. Also unique in the book of John is seven I am statements. The, 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 the name that Jesus Christ or the name that God the Father gives to himself in the book of Exodus is I am. And we see that Jesus takes this I am and then adds some other things as descriptions 
of his character who, and who he is. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. These types of things. So I gave you an opportunity for you to jot those down as you're reading throughout the book of John. Uh, the next section in the book of John is um, chapters 13 through 17. And this is one long uh, evening with Jesus and uh, privately with Jesus and the disciples. He has the Last Supper meal with them. He washes their feet and gives them lots of instructions. And so throughout that, I asked you some questions just to keep you focused as you're reading those chapters. Next, we have the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Those are the chapters 18 through 20. And I just asked you a couple questions, some insights for you, a place for you to jot down some of your own thoughts as you're reading about what Jesus Christ has done, uh, quite graphic and gruesome, but he did that uh, not because he uh, particularly enjoyed it, but he did it because he loved you and I, and our sin required a sacrifice, and he became that perfect sacrifice. Chapter 21 is the conclusion, and we see that Jesus gets Peter back on track by having a lengthy conversation with him. And uh, we have this interchange of, do you love me? Yes, I love you. Feed my sheep. Uh, and that's a great, great interchange. This last page is just some extra information. There are three things in the book of John that are unique that only John records. The message or the conversation with Nicodemus, the Samaritan woman, and the woman caught in adultery. And so I, I thought I'd give you a space just to write down some information, just your thoughts on these three passages. And if you wanted to study this book even further, I gave you an option to do so as well. So I hope you enjoy this. I hope this is a great uh, just start to your diving into the book of John. Um, as always, uh, I or the rest of the pastoral staff, we're always here to talk to you. And if you have any questions about this book, please reach out to the church office and to me. Okay, see you later. Bye.